Let's run through a few issues that you might encounter when logging in and how you might solve them. First of all, for context, um, we're talking about uh, accessing the login nodes here at the top in the top layer. Um, and you might then want to go and make an SSH hop to the Psi machines just beneath the arrow in the compute services layer below. Most of the time, you would access Jasmine from your, uh, your usual machine at your institution. So this might be, uh, say, some host at youruniversity.ac.uk. The whole of the academic um, research network, uh, .ac.uk, is added to the uh, Jasmine allow list. So if, you, if, your home, if your computer at your institution has an IP address which resolves to a fully qualified host name, that means the host name plus the domain name, if it resolves to a fully qualified host name within the .ac.uk domain, that, that means it should pass uh, our check and will be on the allow list. So that's good. That means that if you have your key loaded locally, you can make a connection using that key to login1.jasmin. And if you have agent forwarding enabled, you can also make a hop from there to sci1.jasmin where you'd be able to do some work. Obviously at the moment, um, you may be distant from your institution, so you might have your machine somewhere else. You'd have the same key loaded. In fact, you'd have it loaded there instead of your um, the machine at your institution. But in this case, you're going to be on your home broadband network. Um, so the IP address that you're assigned by your broadband provider does not resolve to a network which is um, part of our allow list. So one option is to go through your institutional VPN. So it'll be a VPN provided by your university. And that gives you a different IP address, one that is able to be resolved to um, an address that's in .ac.uk, and therefore you should be able to proceed to login one and sci one. Another route um, that's also equally valid is that starting from your home machine somewhere else on your broadband connection, you may be able to log in to a machine at your institution via SSH, which allows onward connections um, externally. So you can either do this directly, but it does depend on what your institution allows. In some cases, you might first need to go via a VPN to access that host externally. But once you're on that host, you'll be on a machine that has um, uh, an IP address which resolves to um, an address which is in our allow list again. So it's as if you were at work making an outward connection from that machine to login one and again making the final hop to sci one. If that doesn't work for you, we have an alternative setup using login2.jasmine, which actually allows connections from anywhere. Ideally, we prefer you to connect from a machine which is on your institutional network so that we can just open Jasmine up to the institutional um, networks that, that um, our users uh, generally connect from. Opening up connections to the entire internet is something we're less keen on doing because it's then harder to keep the bad guys out. So we have a limited number of places where you can access Jasmine from anywhere. Login2 is one of them. And that's more closely monitored. It has a stricter set of security rules, but you can access it from your home broadband address. So if none of the options we talked about earlier work for you, you can access Jasmine via this route. In the same way with your local key, with your private key loaded on your machine, and you can make an SSH hop to Sci1. Note that if you want to do data transfers, there's um, an equivalent machine, xfer3.jasmine, which is set up in the same way as login2. But to access x for 3 you would need an additional um, access role. We want you to apply for that so that you read um, some additional instructions that just affect how you might go about your data transfers so that you don't get locked out. As I say, there's some particular rules um, on these machines that are open to everywhere that just um, apply some additional security. 
Let's have a look now at some issues that you might encounter. A common one is that when you try and log in to say login1.jasmine, uh, you see the error message connection reset by peer. This is exactly this network issue that we've just been talking about. So either your um, IP address isn't able to resolve at all. So you can check this with the um, tool we provide here. If you visit this URL from a browser on a machine that you're trying to connect from, it will tell you whether your address resolves and also what it resolves to. Um, it may or may not be an address that's in your institutional domain. If it just resolves to um, an address that's that of your broadband provider, there's a good chance it won't be on our allow list. And so your only option would be either to use login2 or we would ask you to um, try and resolve that with your local IT network team um, and ask them to enable forward and reverse DNS lookup on the IP address that your machine is assigned. Ideally, uh, whether you're connecting directly and also via your institutional VPN. So if uh, it does resolve and it resolves to a domain that's on that's in star.ac.uk, you should be able to log in via login one, two, three, four dot jasmine, the standard config. Sorry, login one, three, and four dot jasmine, the standard config. But if not, you would need to use login two dot jasmine. Another common issue that people hit is that they use the uh, a missing or wrong username. Often the username on your local machine will be different to your Jasmine username. So if you try and connect with that, it's looking for a public key that corresponds with the private key that you've just loaded, but that public key is associated with the Jasmine account that has the username that you've, you've, you've been given for your Jasmine username. If you use a different one, obviously it's not going to find the corresponding key and it's not going to let you in. If you omit the username, it's going to attempt to connect using the local username that you have on your local machine, which has nothing to do with Jasmine. So again, there won't be a corresponding key and you won't succeed in logging in. So always make sure you specify your Jasmine username as part of the SSH command when you try and log in. Hopefully that's covered a couple of issues that you might come across and given you some ways to solve them. If you have any further um, problems, have a look in our help documentation first. There's plenty of information and little videos there. Um, and failing that, you can contact the help desk at support at jasmine.ac.uk.